Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Hi, Christian. I'm recording. There we go. So this is science lesson 1.04, weighing in on mass that we're doing today. Starts here on this page in the science module, and we're going to talk about matter and mass. Okay, here we go. Page one of this 10-page lesson, comparing masses. Balance scales are one of the oldest measuring devices for mass, and they can be used in a number of different ways. In order to measure the mass of an object, you place the object on one side and weights on the other. These weights have known masses, and you keep adding more of them until the balance is balanced. You then up all the weights you placed on the balance scale. The total is the mass of the object being measured. Hmm, but that sounds the same as weight, and we were learning that that is a little bit different. Remember that when you place an object on the balance, you need to account for the container that it's in. Uh -huh. Hi, Kainoa. When you're done, Kainoa, today, make sure that you stay on. Was that Kainoa or was that David? That was me, Kainoa. Okay, stay on after because I want to chat with you. I haven't had a chance to do your interview with you and Megan, okay? Okay. So solids, liquids, and gases. If you're measuring a solid, it's easy. You just stick it on there. If it's a liquid, it's in a container and you have to take away the mass of the container before you and subtract it from the total mass. If it's gas, it must be placed in a container too. And you're gonna to have to hold on to it because if you don't have it in a container, where does the gas go? It just shoots out, doesn't it, into the air. Two objects of the same size may have very different masses. If you have the same amount of two different liquids or gases, their masses may still be different, but pretty close to each other. What about when comparing equal amounts of a solid and a liquid? Hmm. The image shows a container of sand and a container of water. Both containers are the same, so when we put them on the balance, they should cancel each other out. Both containers are filled up to the same level. Which has more mass, the sand or the water? What do you guys think? Just say it. Go ahead and talk. The sand. The sand. 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 Did you guys cheat? Oh, look, the sand has way more mass. When you place two containers on the scales, they'll tip toward the sand. And what I like to think about is like, what if you had a container of styrofoam or feathers and you had the same size container of rocks? Which is gonna weigh more, the feathers or the rocks? Rocks. <laughs> yeah, right? It has way more mass. Self-check review. Mass is the measurement of how much matter an object has. Although mass is not the same as weight, we measure mass by weighing the object. Ah, that's confusing, isn't it? An ice cream sundae has 450 grams of mass. After 15 minutes in the sun, the ice cream is completely turned to liquid. How does the mass of the melted sundae compare to when it was first made? Do you think it stays the same, has more, has less? So same is like this, more, less. What do you think? Depends on what flavor it was. Hopefully nobody says it depends on what flavor it was. What do you guys, I see some people say less. Come on, you guys vote. What do you think? More, less, or the same? I'm not seeing too much voting. Maybe I need to check the chat. Oh, I do see some things in chat. I see a silly comment. Please don't put silly comments in there, Bree. Please stop. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any votes there for anything. I saw one person with a thumb down saying less mass. Let's see if it does have less mass. Incorrect. Not quite it. It has the it has the same mass. That's right. The mass is unaffected when it melts. No matter is added or removed. Hmm. Mom is baking some bread and she mixes 1,000 grams of flour with 2,000 grams of water. What is the mass of the bread dough when it's all mixed together? Is it going to be 3,000 grams? Is it going to be 1,000 grams? 2,000? 4,000? What do you think? 3,000. You guys are thinking three? Let's see. Nine. Correct. The total mass, 3,000 grams, and mixing will yeah, not I do that. Work. Great job. Finally, a student placed some sand directly on one side of a bag right, and some water in another. He saw that the water had more mass than the sand, but was not expecting this. What is the student forgetting? The sand he has must be made of a very light type of rock. Scales must be broken and giving incorrect readings. He must subtract the mass of the container the water's in, or water is a liquid and will spill over the sides of the scale. What is he forgetting? He has to subtract the mass of the container the water is in. Let's see. 
Amazing. If one substance is in a container and one is not, they're difficult to compare. You must weigh each separately and remember to subtract the mass of the container. Nice work, you guys. Let's go on to page four, which I think is the page with the experiment. Oh, maybe it's the next one. Where does science come from? That sounds like a silly question, but it's important to know where this information comes from. Science comes from observing what happens. That means watching, explaining why it happens, and most important, provide evidence or data that the explanation makes sense. Evidence comes from scientific tests or experiments designed to eliminate other explanation. If the results of an experiment could have two possible explanations, then you cannot know for sure which one is correct. That's why we have to do something called isolating the variable. Let's say you wanna know how heavy something is. You can't put two things on there, you have to just have one. Or if you wanna know how high a ball bounces, you can't have 10 different kinds of balls. You have to say, oh, I'm just gonna measure, like if I drop it from here and if I drop it from up higher, that's gonna be my variable, but I'm gonna use the same kind of ball. I'm gonna drop it in the same way on the same surface. If the experiment's results cannot be repeated, then it is not a valid experiment. The result cannot be trusted. Okay, if an experiment has only one reasonable explanation, the same experiment gives the same results every time, then you can start to believe it. So that's kind of the tricky thing about science. You have to do it carefully. Opinion artifact. It is normal to have opinions on different things. Some people don't like country music. Some people love it. Neither group is wrong. Well, that's, that's your opinion. However, opinions can create a lot of confusion. In science, they should focus on facts, not opinions. The triple balance beam is used to, for accurate measuring. To measure the mass of an object, you place it on the pan. This is the pan. The movable masses on the three beams can measure the object to within 0.05 grams, five hundredths of a gram. When a scientist thinks they're onto something, they do not share the results immediately. They run the experiment again and again and share their work with other scientists. At some point this year, we'll do a science project. And when you do it, you're going to have to do it more than once. Nine, and you keep ready to oh, Somebody needs to mute their screen. Didn't I just told you right nine is here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Repetition means repeating it several times to make sure that you do trials and get the same results. Look, this looks fun. That means you don't just blow up the volcano once, but you blow it up three times to make sure that you've got the right results. What makes a good experiment? How do you know if it's valid? The answer is the scientific method. This is a process that can be applied in order to answer just about any question. And here's a video on the scientific method. It begins with an observation that leads to a question. Then it builds on what we know. When you take a bag of ice cubes out of the freezer, the ice cubes melt and become water as they gain heat. Does the bag of ice cubes have more or less mass? How does the melting affect the mass of ice? Test variable. It's also called an independent variable. The test variable is the thing that changes in the experiment and there has to be just one thing changing. It's also called a dependent variable. The outcome variable is what is measured. So in this case, you're, you're testing the ice being out in the heat. I think the variable probably is the temperature you put it in. Like if you take it out on a cold, cold day outside when it's frozen, it probably doesn't melt. If you take it out in the kitchen and it's hot, it probably does melt. That's your variable, the temperature. The outcome variable is what you're measuring. And that is the melted ice to see if it has the same mass. The constant variables are like how much ice you use, when you take it out, how long you leave it out. That has to stay the same, okay? Write like a scientist. They want you to take some notes on the scientific method. Messing with mass, do you recycle at home? The matter in the bottle that you put in your recycling bin will be broken down and made into new bottles or other plastic products. No mass will be gained or lost, but the form it takes will change. The law of conservation of mass states that mass cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed. When you burn a piece of wood, for example, it looks like the wood has disappeared. But the truth is the matter in the wood has simply changed form. Some of it turned to ash and some turned to smoke. If you were to weigh all the ash and smoke, it would have the same mass as the original piece of wood. And here is think like a scientist. Here we're gonna talk about a snowball changing as it melts. 
If you place a snowball in a container on a scale and waited for it to melt, would you expect the reading on the scale to change? What do you think? As it melts, will it change and get lighter or heavier or stay the same? Nope, not gonna change, huh? There would be no change. When mass changes from a solid to a liquid, it's simply changing form. No mass has been created or destroyed. Here are three more examples. Remember the total mass in each example does not change. As the scoops of ice cream melt, their mass does not change. It simply changes state. The ice pop has the same mass as the liquid juice that went into the freezer, but it takes up more space. When it, Have you ever had anything freeze in the freezer and like break the container it's in or get bigger? So it, it does spread out, but it still weighs the same. This batter has the same mass as the ingredients that made it. Hmm, I'm looking for the butter melting experiment. Where is it? Practice like a scientist. Ah, here we go. <laughs> this is what we wanted to do. It says print the weighing in on mass activity sheet and follow the instructions. The slider on this page will also help you through the process. Let's see what it says. Butter. Butter makes everything taste more delicious. Could there be a way to get more out of a stick of butter? Does it melting it create more mass? Write a scientific question for this experiment. And I think this is your question. Does melting butter create more mass? Complete the sentence below to write your hypothesis. If the mass of a stick of butter uh, melts, then no mass was created when it melted. Oh, weighs the same. I think you'd say weighs the same. Stick of butter, small pot, mixing bowl, scale, and oven mitts. All right, here we go. You guys want to do this experiment with me right now? Yeah, sure. Here we go. We're going downstairs. Can you still see me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, can you, can you like stop sharing so we can I'll stop the sharing. You can walk through my house with me. Here we are walking down the stairs. It's a big house. Wow. No, it looks like a, it looks like a hut. Like in like. <laughs> Like, it's, 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 you know, Here we go. Here's my son. He's working on Zoom over there. He works for a place called Strava. That's Quinn. Say hi, Quinn. Hello. Hello. And here I am. Hi. Kitchen. I'll turn it this way. At the stove. See my stove here? Hey, I, I can't do it. Is that okay? I can do it a pot. Here's a pot. Uh, I think I'll use Wait, this are we pot. leaving? Well, here's a little pot. Little thing. I've got to get a stick of butter. I don't know what I'm going to do with this butter after I melt it, but hey. And I need a scale, right? That's for all the ingredients. I happen to have a scale here. Where is my scale? I know it's here somewhere. Where did Daddy put it? Hmm. Looking Classic. Classic. Well, I'm looking. Anybody see it anywhere? <laughs> I don't know where he put it. He put it up high. My husband's really tall, so he thinks that he has to put things up high. All right. You know what? This is annoying. Where is my scale? Let's go downstairs and see if it's there. Here we go. Yeah, do you have a scale that'll weigh, weigh a pot of melted butter? It's not up there. You do? I have a scale. Oh, here it is. I found it, Quinn. I'm okay. Okay, here's my scale. This is a scale. So who can tell me what I have to do first so I'll know whether the butter changes weight? You need to melt the butter. Weigh the, just to put in, before you have to contain it, so you have to weigh the bowl before right, you put so, the butter. So I could do it two ways, right? I could weigh the bowl and then subtract it, or I could weigh the bowl with the butter in it before it melts and then weigh the bowl with the butter in it after it melts. So I'm gonna set this thing to zero. My scale has to be, I have to make sure my scale is set to zero. Ah, it's not working quite right. There it goes. It's on zero. Here's, here's what my scale looks like up close. It has numbers on it. I got to set that where I can see it. And you guys can see it. And it's at zero. Now I have to put my butter. I'll take my paper off in case it's heavy. Put my butter in here. Ah. And we have to weigh it. I wonder how much it's going to weigh. Here we go. Putting it on. It says it weighs. Um, 
four four hundred and let's see what are the increments 20 40 60 80 100 um it weighs 420 grams so i'm going to write that down so i can remember it 420 grams or it weighs one pound which is interesting with the pot okay now I don't have to subtract the weight of the pot because I'm just checking to see if it changes weight when it melts. So now it's time to light the stove. Do not try this at home unless you have permission. So here we go, we're lighting the stove. Ah, uh, oh, this is my clicky stove. I'm gonna switch it. Okay, otherwise it's gonna make that clicking noise. Oh, it's already starting to melt. Look at that, it fell, fell over already. Yeah. Okay, friends, I'll move this in where you can see it and watch it. <laughs> It's pretty it makes exciting. Me sad. Like watching butter melt. That's kind of that's that's kind of dangerous. Not gonna lie. Well, I'm being careful, right? I'm in the kitchen. I'm with a grown up, which is me. I might have to turn on my fan though, and that's gonna be really loud. So just uh, oh, look, it fell over. Oh wow! It's oh, it's really melting fast. fast. It's melting. It's melting pretty fast. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit because it, uh, I don't want it to burn. Simmering away in there. <laughs> Do you have a microwave? We have a microwave. We could have done it in the microwave too, huh? Mm -hmm. Could have done it in the microwave. Yeah. But it's more satisfying when you're doing it in the oven. <laughs> it's kind of fun. You can see it bubbling away in there. Do you think any of the butter is leaving in the form of a gas? Hey. Hey. What do you think? Up? Think we're losing any mass in the form of a gas? Maybe I should have a lid on there so nothing leaves. Should I put a lid on it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Find my uh, liquid lid. Find my really tiny lid, but I'll put this lid over it for now. You can see it's kind of steamy. Okay, it's about half melted. We'll give it another minute. About three quarters melted. Getting pretty melty in there. Look at that. There's not much left to melt. Wow, that's a melty butter. That melted fast. Now I could make some nice sauce out of that. Hmm, some buttery sauce. Yeah, just make some pancakes and then just put the butter over them. Pour the melted butter over them or make a nice sauce for some you, asparagus. You have weird butter. It's like huge. It's weird butter? <laughs> oh, you have yeah, I think it's like a pot. Okay, I think, let me see how it's doing it. You can actually see that there is some condensation um, mm -hmm. on the, the lid. So there actually is some moisture that came out of the butter. Um, like water. I wonder if it's enough to weigh. All right, our butter is melted. I'm going to turn it off. And now we're going to weigh it. I'll turn off the fan so you can hear me. Here we go. And I think the only problem is I hope it doesn't melt my scale because I didn't put a hot pad down, did I? Okay, here we go. You ready? Putting it on. It weighs one pound or 420 grams. Exactly the same. Okay, I'm writing down my results. Now, is doing it one time enough to prove it in science? Yeah, no. No, how many times should you do an experiment? Like 10. Yeah, two or three times is a really good amount of times to make sure that it works really well. Yeah. So remember friends, when you use the scientific method, you have to try it out. And then you have to do it a few times. Let me see what we were supposed to record on our sheet and let's see what we noticed. So back to my share and let's look at the hypothesis. If the mass of a stick of butter weighs the same after it melts, then no mass was created when it melted. Take the stick of butter out of its packaging, place it in a bowl, weigh the bowl and butter together, Record the mass, fill the pot halfway with water and put it on the stove. Oh, I did not follow directions, sorry. The bowl should sit comfortably. They're trying to do it so you don't get burned. Leave the bowl on the pot until the butter has completely melted. We did it a little faster. Let it melt on its own. 
place the bowl back on the scale. Oh, and now we're supposed to put the bowl in the fridge and allow the butter to cool and become solid again. Then weigh it again and see if it's the same again. So that kind of makes it two times. So if I were gonna write my test variable here, what did we test? What did we change about the butter? What changed about the butter? It melted. It melted. Yeah, so we added heat and we melted the butter. That's our test variable. And what did we measure? What was our outcome variable? One pound. The weight, right? We weighed it. And our control, we kept the amount of butter the same. We didn't take any butter in or out. That was our control. So the butter started as a solid and here's a place you could put down how much it weighed. And then it melted and we weighed it again. And now if we had time, which we don't, we would put it in the refrigerator and freeze it again. Ask your parents if you can try this experiment at home. And here's the mass of butter. So this is interesting because it's, it goes from zero to 250, but it doesn't say what you're measuring it in. Like our butter weighed what? It was a lot of grams. It was 450, 420 grams. So it wouldn't even fit on this chart. So you have to be careful about making charts. <laughs> what does the data and your analysis tell you? What's the answer to the question you asked at the beginning? Was your hypothesis correct? So let's look back at our question. Our question was, if we melt the butter, will the mass stay the same? Were we correct? Yes, our mass did stay the same. It didn't matter if the butter was solid or liquid. Now, if we boiled it for a long time, do you think it would get less? Because you saw that water forming on the lid. Do you think if we boiled that butter for a long time, it would be less? Maybe. Maybe, I think you might be right. All right, boys and girls, so that is your science project.